Welcome to Revit Crash Course for Architects, Session 9, Working with Components and Creating Details. This course is designed to help transition from 2D drafting to Revit and master its essential tools and features in the easiest and smoothest way possible. Let's begin! In this video, we'll learn how to add components from the Revit library, we'll create custom components in place, and we'll work on creating work sets for our components. We'll also detail stairs, railings, and ramps, and we'll work on adding construction details to our drawings. So taking a look at our floor plan here, things are looking really good, but I know that we need to plan around some furniture elements and the way to do that is to insert components. So the first thing that we're going to do is use the Revit library components that come automatically loaded. If you go up to the insert tab at the top, you're going to go to load family. And what will happen is it will automatically open Revit's library. Now there are two libraries. If I go up a file, you'll be able to see that. There's the US Imperial and US Metric. This comes standard with your Revit install. Um, under generic, there's really nothing in here, so don't worry about that. I generally work in the Imperial file only, but if you have an overseas client, um, you may want to use the metric system. So going in here, we'll quickly look down their organization for their file structure. If you're looking for things that are not preloaded in the Revit template, this is where you would find them. Um, they're not organized in any other way other than alphabetical here, so you might have to start learning how they put their things together. Um, in this case, you know, if I wanted to take a look at casework, I can go to the base cabinets. These are all of the base cabinets that come preloaded with Revit. So in my case, I'm going to grab this corner angled unit. And you'll see that it gave you a little bit of a pause. And now if I go back to my architecture, place my component, it grabs that base component corner angled unit. Okay, so I can just click, insert it into my file. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And now here is my corner cabinet. So it's really as simple as that, we working with the Revit component library. Now if I want to create something custom, however, uh, we've actually kind of gone through that process already, but I'll walk you through it in specifics here for a lobby reception desk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my architecture tab, component, I'm going to drop this down, and I'm going to model in place. You will be given similar organizational strategies to what the Revit component library is. Um, so you select what item you are modeling. In our case, we're going to model casework, and I'm going to name this. Anything that you create custom, you have to name in Revit. So I'm going to call this reception desk. And then it opens up this dialog and you choose what you're going to create. In our case, I'm going to do an extrusion because I'm just going to pop something up straight. But if I was to create a custom shape, I could do this blend. I could revolve a, a profile around um, a point. I could sweep something or I could sweep a blended shape and then I can cut pieces out by using this void form here as well. So again, in our case, we're going to use just a simple extrusion and I'm going to take a look at this and decide how I want this desk to look. So I'm going to actually take some line work and I'm going to offset this and let's make that radius 12 feet. And then I'm going to use my offset tools. We're going to offset this 30 inches because that'll allow for a wall to be installed below that. I already have um, some indicators here of space. I can use my annotate tab to measure things. So I've got four feet clear around the sides of this desk, which is fine because I want people to be able to get into the vestibules, for instance. So I'm going to select my pieces. And then I'm going to trim because I want to have a radius on the corner of this desk so that it's not so sharp. And then I'm going to trim my arc here. And so that's the general basic shape. Now I have to tell Revit where I want this extrusion to be. I'm going to end it at 30 inches because I know that that's working table height. 
And I know that my countertop depth is one and a half inches, so I'm gonna put two foot 4.5 in here. And that means an inch and a half difference between where it starts and where it ends. And I'll apply that. I'll finish this. And now here is that first finished component. Now I can still add more pieces to this. And that's really handy because you can sort of create all of your extrusions in a group. Um, or I could finish this model. At this point, I do want to add something else. I want to have sort of a top um, station in here for people to come up to. I'm going to have a low side and a high side. Um, so I'm going to create an extrusion again. And I'm going to just select this line. I'm going to offset it, well, let's say two inches so that it pops out. And then I'm going to offset it again, 12 inches so that it sort of pops back in over the top of the desk there. I'm gonna select my side piece, offset this two inches. I'm gonna have rounded corners, I'm gonna change my radius to two inches. And then I'm going to have this desk stop right here in the middle. And do my radius again, two inches. I'm going to delete this reference line because I don't need it. So there's my top desk piece. Now this one I want to extend to 42 inches above the floor. Again, it's going to be an inch and a half thick. So we will set this at three foot, four and a half. I'm going to apply and I'm going to finish that. So now I have two sort of floating countertops. I'm going to move my tag here. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to create my view, 3D view, camera, and I'm going to act like I'm standing in this corner of the room and looking this way. And there are my two sort of floating um, desks. Coming back to this, I can now add my support wall. I can either do this with architecture, going up to my wall and creating a wall, or I can go, I can actually click on my desk, I can edit this in place. And I can add another extrusion that acts like a wall. And I think that's what we're going to do in our case. It'll be the easiest. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to offset the front of my desk because I want to have a exposed um, piece there. So I'm going to offset this one inch from this side. And then I'm going to offset that again six inches because I know that I need a fairly sturdy wall to support my desk. I'm going to offset each side from the countertop one inch, one inch here on the other side. Delete that one, I don't need that. And then I'm going to trim these wall pieces. So this one is actually going to extend up part way and then I'm going to need another wall under this part. So I'm going to do this one first. I'm going to extend it to the underside of my countertop. So that'd be two foot four. 0.5 inches and this is actually going to start at the floor okay the reason that you can't see the wall is this countertop is actually over the top of it which is fine I'm going to create my second extrusion I'm going to offset one inch and in this case I'm offsetting it from the lower level so there'll be a little bit more of a lip for the overhang of the upper side Offset that six inches so it's in the same line as my wall below. I'm going to select another line, offset this one inch. I'm going to trim these pieces. And now I want to make sure that this other side has the same overhang. So I'm going to take a look at my annotation tab aligned. That's three inch offset there. I'm going to select this line, change this offset to three inches, and there is where I want my wall to end. Okay, so I'm going to trim all those pieces. So now this one's actually going to start at two foot six and it's going to end at three foot four and a half. And the reason that I'm doing that is that I want all of my pieces to just meet the other ones. I don't want them to bypass through each other, it'll end up doing weird things in the end when you cut a section or something. So I'm going to finish this model, go back to my 3D view, 
And now here is that custom reception desk. You can see the two modeled wall pieces, the first countertop, the upper wall, and then the upper countertop. So that's a really quick way um, to sort of walk you through how to create your own components. I'm gonna to go to my architecture component, and I'm gonna drop this down and just take a look at what's preloaded in here. Now, if I had anything that was um, furniture based, it would be in division 12. So I'm gonna type in 12, and I really don't see that much, and that's okay. So I'm gonna go back to my load family. I'm gonna go back up in the Revit U.S. Imperial Library, and I'm gonna take a look at their furniture. So you can see that they've got options for seating here. They've got a desk chair, so let's insert this file. So I double clicked on it. Now I have to go back to architecture and component, and then I have to drop this in. Now, because of the view template that's on my floor plan, I'm getting this warning, none of the created elements are visible in the, in the view, and that's fine. If we go do our floor plan for furniture, FFE plan, that will show up and there's that chair. So I'm gonna rotate this 180 degrees. And now we, ha we are starting to see some implications of furniture in this space. Now, if I wanted to do something special here, I could actually create a work set where I can put all of my furniture on one work set and then I can turn it off. So let's say that I wanted to put all of my furniture on a specific work set because I wanted to turn it on and off. Uh, the way that you would do that is you go up to your Collaborate tab and then you see this button here called Work Sets. We're going to click on this. I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it FFE. And I'm going to turn this off for visible in all views. That means anything that's new that's imported or put on this work set will not automatically show up. So here I've created it. Um, I'm going to be the owner of it. Borrowers are other people who would work in the file. Um, right now we're, we're just the only people who are working in our own files, so we don't need to worry about this. And then you see this open tab. If you close it and you say no, then everything on that work set will disappear. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say that it's the active work set, yes. I'm gonna click on my desk chair over here in the properties, under identity data, you can see it's under work set one. We're gonna drop that down and change it to the FFE work set. And there you go, it disappeared, okay? So where did it go? It's still in the model, it's still in the file. If you wanted to see everything on that view, you would click on it and you'd say visible in all views. And there it is again. So if I wanna turn it off, I take that and say not visible in all views. There are other options for working with components. Uh, obviously, Revit is not gonna have every single thing that you need. So if you think about um, downloading files from the internet, there's a couple of options. Um, you can go to revitcity.com. You can also go to bimobject.com. They have some really good options for uh, components that you can model and download. You need to be careful with some of these because they're going to be very large files and they can be a little bit unwieldy to deal with. I typically take those files and I'll put them in a fresh Revit folder and I'll kind of open them up. I will remove anything that I don't need, particularly if there's material files or something like that that's assigned to it. Sometimes you'll find with downloaded files that they are actually former AutoCAD blocks that are in 3D and you can't do anything with those. You can't modify them, you can't stretch any of the components. So if you run across one of those AutoCAD block models, I, I just avoid them altogether. Um, some examples I found like a, a 3D copier printer that was a 3D model that was imported from AutoCAD, turned into a Revit file, it, it was useless. I couldn't change any of the materials. I couldn't change the size of it. So rather than use that file, I actually went to a manufacturer's website and you know I would download um, a specific type of furniture or something like that instead. So those are just some tips and tricks for working with manufacturer files or internet files for design components. So the next topic that we're gonna cover in this training video is modeling stairs, railings, and ramps. So 
in our building we have everything on one story but let's pretend that our site slopes drastically back from here to here that would raise this courtyard area uh, because we'd need it to come in at the same height as our finished floor but then we would need a set of steps down from that space so i'm going to go to my architecture tab i'm actually going to click on my stair here and you're going to see it's going to start the stair function so there are a lot of preloaded stairs in the template. There's a metal pan, there's wood closed riser, wood open riser, there's concrete stairs, and then there's concrete precast stairs. In my case, I'm gonna use my cast in place concrete stair. So coming to the section of the building, I know that I need another level that's halfway between the first floor and the bottom of the pool level. The easiest way to create a new level is to just copy another one. So I'm gonna click on the bottom of pool level, click copy, and then I'm gonna move that up two feet, and there's the new level. I'm gonna call this bottom of porch stair. I'm gonna to go to architecture, stair, and I need to tell it where the base level is and where the top level is. Our base level is bottom of porch stair. Our top level is the first floor. You can see that there's two feet. We're gonna use our cast in place concrete stair, and I'm just gonna draw those risers. I'm gonna complete that and it will automatically create my railings. Now I'm gonna click on these railings because these aren't the style that I'd like to see. I'm gonna drop this down and change those to the deco type. So we're gonna create our curved and straight ramp. This is a pretty complex shape. So what I've done is I've created some sketch lines here and I've sort of outlined for myself where things are gonna stop and start. I'm gonna go up to my architecture tab, select my ramp, so I'm going to do two runs here, one straight run and one curved run, and Revit will automatically create a landing to connect those two pieces, but I have to make sure they're in the right spots. So first I'm going to tell Revit I want it to start at the bottom of the porch stair, and then I'm going to finish at the first floor. This will make sure that I have the right size. My ramp is four feet wide. I'm going to do my first run straight, and I'm going to select this point, and I'm going to go... 10 feet. Okay, so Revit has automatically created this straight run. Now I'm going to select my curve. I'm going to select my center here. I'm going to come up to about this area. Now you have to be careful. If I were to select it here, my landing would be far too short. So I need to sort of create an idea of where it's going to start around here. And then you can see it's automatically created that piece. I'm going to delete this railing because I don't need that one. I'm going to change this one to our deco railing. And they end up pretty close there. So overall I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to delete all my sketch lines here. I'm going to change the offset of the railing from the path six inches so that it projects into my railing space here. We're actually going to do the same thing. We're going to change this to a no post on our deco. I'm going to edit this path and bring that segment right over here. So now you can see that landing railing ends right where I want it to. I'm going to add a one foot extension to the end of my railing. There we go, so it meets all the code requirements for the handrail to extend one foot past. These ones we need to do the same thing. And now all I'm gonna do is select these elements, the railing, the ramp, the handrail for the stair, and I'm gonna mirror it around that center point so that we get the exact same thing on the other side. So now that we have our stairs and our ramp created here, let's turn our attention to creating some details. So I'm going to go back to my floor plan and I'm going to actually create a section view for a wall section. And I'm going to show you how you can add some components and start detailing the pieces and parts that really make up um, how we build the building. So I'm going to take this section, I'm going to open it up, 
And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at what kind of view template is on this. And currently none is assigned. So I'm going to take a look here. There's a building section and then there's a wall section. So we're going to select this and that will automatically change how parts of this appear. And as you can see, we're missing some really key pieces here. So we don't have any foundation wall details shown here. Um, we need to call out how we're going to detail the head of our windows and our window sills. Uh, we need to figure out what is the edge look like for our roof here. So there's a lot of potentials for details. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is clean up some of the things that we don't need. So I'm going to hide these elements in the view. I'm going to turn off this crop and then I'm going to adjust where my far clip ends up. And what you're seeing here is sort of this angle that's coming down and, and disappearing into nothing. That's because Revit is trying to look past the cut plane seven feet, two inches. So we're gonna change this to be one inch and see what happens. So now everything's nice and clean. You can see here that um, we just have a simple edge to our roof fascia and uh, it's a much better section. So the first thing I'm going to do here is look at how our foundation might occur in this location. I could model this element, but what I'm going to show you is a quick way that you can add detail without modeling every single thing in the project. So in my case, I know that I want to have a haunched slab edge here rather than a deep foundation wall. And we're going to do that because the whole thing will be insulated and this will be a radiant floor. So in my case, I'm actually going to come up to the annotate tab and I'm going to do a filled region and I'm going to draw it down. So I know that I want my slab edge to be at the edge of my window. I'm going to bring it down 12 inches over 12 inches, then up at a 45 degree angle. In this case, 135 is the opposite of that until it meets my slab edge here. Now I can do a few things. I can actually bring this back in. In my case, I'm actually gonna bring this up and over the 3D element because we're gonna hide that element and we're just gonna see this 2D section, okay? I'm gonna drop down my filled region. I'm gonna type concrete. You can see there's a fill pattern for concrete. You say, okay. Now that fill pattern went right over my 3D element. You can see that my floor slab is still there behind this. Um, but we know in real life that they would create this formwork and the haunch slab edge would be part of our actual slab. So this is what it would look like in real life. Now I'm gonna go over to my project browser and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to take a look at my visual component library here. So these are all the things that are preloaded in the template for you to use that might be bits and pieces and parts of different details. In my case, I know that I want to have my poly ISO exterior grade insulation. We're going for a high performance building here. So I'm actually going to grab my three and a half inch section. All I'm doing is I'm selecting it and doing control C to copy that element. I'm going to go back to my section. I'm going to paste it. And there it is, it's ready for me to work with. So I'm gonna rotate this over 90 degrees and I'm just gonna place it right along this. I can create, I'm gonna right click this and create similar. And now I'm gonna draw down and out. To create each of these elements. Now this one looks a little bit funny because of how the cleanup is. So what I might do here is actually flip these elements, bring it down, flip this element, and then when I clean up the corners, it'll look a little bit better. So taking a look at this, I know that it would actually be better if I was to align all of the insulation that I have in my exterior wall. So I've got three inch here. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna move that whole design. So 
we're actually going to change these ones. We can drop this down. And you can see from the drop down list, three inch. Now I can just move that outboard there. And my insulation line continues directly around my slab and my wall. So this is a really great detail um, because the whole piece is fully pr protected. So we'll just fix our cleanups here. All I'm doing is aligning and locking those pieces. And now we quickly have a hunch slab detail with continuous insulation. Now I know that my grade is not going to come directly in here. We're actually going to have a little bit of this exposed. So I'm going to come up and I can use my detail lines to start indicating where I have something that might be covering this insulation. It might be parging or it might be some other type of coating system. In my case, I'm probably going to do a stucco parge on it. So I have my sketch line. I can drop this down. And this is very similar to the different line styles in AutoCAD. You can select them. They're all based on size. Make sure that your button up here for the thin lines is turned off and you'll see how they will uh, display in real life. And actually looking at this, I can tell that I've got a little bit of an issue here. I'm going to edit my boundary for my concrete slab. That's set at a really thick line and I, and I don't want that. So I'm going to change this down to be three and see what that looks like instead. Yeah, that, that looks much better to me. So here's my parging. And I can just indicate, you know, a semi sloping line out here for the building grade. I'll just do that really simply. I know that I want this line to be a minimum of four inches below here. So I'm going to drag that and just make sure that I have four inches. So now I'm going to come back to my annotate tab. I'm going to create another region to indicate the earth that's showing in this section. And clean up these lines. Come back over here to my properties, type in earth. And you can see that we have a texture already preloaded. I'm going to change these. Again, they're, they're that solid five black. I'm going to change these to be three. And now you can start to see quickly how we can add detail without having to model the entire site. And we haven't modeled all of that insulation, but we're really starting to understand how the building sits and how it interacts with the ground below it. So taking a look at my wall, I know that I'm going to have a sill plate here. I know that I'm going to have some blocking underneath the window and blocking at the window header. So let's go back to our visual component library. Over here on the side, you can see that there's section pieces. I'm going to grab the continuous wood blocking. I'm going to copy that and paste it over here into our detail. And this is a flexible detail component, so it's really easy to manipulate. You can just stretch it and it will fit into the space that's required. So this makes things really fast and easy to detail here. I'm going to grab a piece of blocking, put it there. Copy this up, put a piece of blocking here. And of course we know that we would have wood at the top of our wall. So I'm going to put that here. And there you go. Pretty quickly you can see that you've got all of those pieces for your wood in this section. Um, first, assuming that we would just have a simple bat insulation under the annotate tab, um, there's something called, funnily enough, insulation. So we're just going to grab this and you can tell it how wide you want this. I know I've got a six inch exterior wall, so I'm going to say five and a half. And you just draw from one point to another and it automatically puts in your insulation line. So in no time at all, we've really taken this section from looking like nothing to looking like something. Let's add some text to annotate our section here. So I'm just going up to the text area and I'm going to point out the pieces and parts of this. So I come out with my leaders and I'm going to say cement fiber siding. 
I'm going to take a look at this, this text size. It's a little bit large for the scale of our drawing, so I'm actually going to change that. Let's try 564, so this is my go-to most of the time. Yeah, that looks a lot better there. So you can just copy. I try and keep all my leaders the same going across so that it looks really nice and clean when you're viewing the detail. 3-inch continuous rigid insulation. And in this case, it's a little hard to see exactly what this is pointing to, so I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to actually set this one to be a dot and I'll put that right in the middle of that material, okay? So I'm not adding all of the annotations, but you can start to see how quickly something can come together here. Now I might want to add a few detail lines. This looks a little odd because we know that in real life there would be a detail line here where you would see the edge of the window jam beyond. So I'm going to create that. I'm going to put that in there as a solid line and we're going to put it back as gray. And this just starts to show some of those details beyond. Um, even though we've told Revit we're cutting it at one inch beyond our view plane, I want to see you know, the sides of my windows there. That's just a much more standard way of, of viewing an architectural section in detail. I know that I'm going to need a larger detail at my window head and my window sill. So we're going to come up to our view and we're going to create a call out. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reference another view. The reason that I'm going to do this, I'll, I'll show you first what happens if I don't. Okay, if I come in here and I create that view for my enlarged detail and I double click on this, you can see all of the components here and that can be really helpful except for the fact that they're all kind of big and clunky you'd have to hide these in order to draw over the top of them. So if you want to do that, that's okay. Um, I really prefer though, usually for those types of details, I'll go back to my section here. I'm going to delete this one. Revit's going to say, do you want to do this? Yes, I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to do the call out. I'm going to reference other view and I'm going to tell it to create a new drafting view. The reason is if I create a new drafting view, I'm, I'm actually separating my 3D section from my 2D detail. And that means that I can change things uh, without having to worry that I'm modifying my 3D element in any way. So if I come into this, you'll see it's just blank. There's nothing here. And that's really okay from my perspective because I want to make sure that I have plenty of space um, to draft in. So in this case, we're actually going to utilize a CAD file and take a look at a detail that was provided by the manufacturer for that window head. So I'm going to come up to my insert tab and I'm going to link a CAD file. Please remember, never, ever, ever use this import CAD file. The reason is if you bring something in, it has a bunch of junk that will come with it and it will totally screw up your Revit file. So we're going to link our CAD file. We're going to navigate to where I have saved these. I'm going to select the file and then there's a couple of options that you want to take a look at down here. So in my preview, I can see that there's a lot of different colored lines and layers because this was a CAD file. Well, I don't want all of those lines and layers and colors to show up in Revit. So I'm actually going to change this, drop this down to black and white. It will automatically come into the current view only because I'm bringing it into a drafting drawing. And then I'm going to make sure that the correct lines that are slightly off axis is on. Otherwise, Revit won't be able to understand how to dimension. If two lines are not completely parallel to one another, Revit cannot snap to create the dimensions. So this is an important one like, to make sure that's on. My positioning is fine. Um, if I was bringing in a CAD underlay of like a site plan or something like that, I might drop this down and change it to be manual so that I can choose where I place that thing. Um, but for now, the, the origin to origin auto is fine. So we're going to open this. And now you can see I have that entire CAD file loaded into my Revit. These are manufacturer details straight from Anderson. And so I can just go right in here 
and I can reference what they're showing. So I might really like this series of details, for instance, and I can then utilize these in my view. What I've done is I've actually flipped this whole CAD reference file to the other side so that my window head and my sill are in the same orientation as my section. In reality, it'd be a lot easier for me to just load these three details um, because then I could utilize them individually in the file. But since I've loaded the whole thing, I'll show you a little trick. You can come down to your annotate tab and you can do a masking region. And that way we'll only see the pieces that we want from this detail. So I'm going to create two boxes. One is going to be where you can see, and then the other one is going to be on around the entire outside of the rest of the details. I'm going to set this line here to be invisible. And now all the rest of those details sort of disappear. Okay. So because I flipped this, all of these dimensions now are sort of weird and backwards, and that's not what we would want. So I'm going to select my CAD file. I'm going to query up here in the toolbar, and I'm going to select one of these items. So you can see that it, it tells you within the CAD file there's these layers and levels, and these are on the Aiano dims. I'm going to hide that in view, and all of a sudden we have much, much cleaner details. I'm going to do the same thing here because these don't match my Revit text. I'm going to hide these in view. And so now I have three details that are simple and clean and I can just utilize those as my reference. So let's go back to our section. And I'm actually going to do this whole thing around the entire window. And we go back to our section callout because these already have the cut lines. I can indicate, you know, the pieces and parts here. Let's add a few more details here. So we know, for instance, that we need to show the exterior and we need to show our window and our blocking. I'm going to pin this detail in place and then I'm going to come down here and turn off the pin. So now I can't touch or move these. Let's change our scale for these section pieces. So I've discovered a really interesting problem here. My CAD file was brought in at a different scale than true to life. So that's a little bit interesting. That's a bit of conundrum actually for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpin this and I'm going to create a measurement here. So I definitely know that my scale is off here because there's no way that an insulated window unit is one foot thick. I know that this reference should really be one inch thick. So here's how I'm going to fix this. I'm going to create a detail line coming down from this. I'm going to offset it one inch. Once I click on my CAD file, I can come up here and I can scale this. So I'm actually going to do a graphic scale. So I'm going to grab this corner. I'm going to grab this corner and then I'm going to bring it down to that scale. And now I have a one inch thick glazing unit. So now my details should show up the right size here. Now I can come back to my visual library and copy my blocking. And now it's the proper size. So since this is not a course on how to detail window heads and jams and such, I'm not going to go any further with the detailing here, but at least you now know the process of bringing in a CAD file and annotating and changing those details. Okay, so let's go back and I'll show you the other way to detail something using completely Revit components. So in my view here, I'm going to go with my callout. I'm not going to reference the other view. I'm actually going to use Revit to help me create this detail. I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to go to that view. Here we are. I'm going to change my scale. I want it to be three inch. You can see all of the components sort of change their scale there. I'm going to take off my crop. We're going to hide this. And now at least I have a basis to start with. So I'm going to go up to insert and I'm going to load a family. That's going to take me into the Imperial library that comes preloaded with Revit. 
I'm going to scroll down. You can see detail items right here. And they're organized by division. Let's go to Division 8 Openings. I'm going to go to Wood Windows. And I'm going to use a wood double hung window head section. So now it's loaded. I'm going to go back to Annotate. I'm going to select the component. And now here it is. I'm going to drop that onto my view. And the nice thing about this is that it's it's pretty much ready to go. I'm going to flip this in my orientation because I know this is my exterior side. And I can place this over the top of my other component. Now you can see why this gets messy pretty quickly here. Because I have to decide how this is going to interact with all my pieces and where is that trim going to come up and so I might then have to hide my 3D component in the background. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to hide that element. It's still there, but what I've done in the detail is I'm just moving it so that I can see all the pieces and parts in the right location where I want them to be. Let's go back to our section. We know that we have our insulation and our blocking. I'm going to copy these in place and I'm going to go back to our detail and I'm going to paste those aligned to the current view. And there they are. They're in the exact same place as they are in the wall section. Now I know I have a little bit of a problem here though because I need to have continuous blocking at my window head. So I need to go into my visual component library. I'm going to select my discontinuous because it means that it doesn't go along it the same way that my wall framing would. And I'm going to rotate this one up to show my window header. I'm just copying this element over a couple of times. And there you go. If I wanted to show this again on the wall section for whatever reason, I could take these elements, I could copy them again, go back to that section, paste in place, align to current view, and there's that window header. So now my wall section and my detail look much more like each other. So I know I want to have some trim out here and I might have some window face trim that's inside the room. So let's go back to our insert tab. We're going to load a family. We're going to go up a file here. So we're going to go to architectural woodwork and we're going to go to wood trim. So here's a couple of options. Here's a window stool. This would be used for a windowsill. These are all of the preloaded trim pieces. I'm not finding anything that is what I want, however, here. So I'm going to create everything out of filled regions. So let's go back to architecture. Back to annotate, I'm going to create a filled region. I'm going to match the depth of the framing that's shown here. We'll change our line style to match this. And then I'm going to change this, drop this down to wood, wood trim. So I've got that trim piece. I can copy and use this same field region, rotate it up. I can edit the size of this. So rather than this face being seven eighths, I'm gonna change it to three quarter inch trim. And I'm gonna change the height here. Let's do this three and a half inches. Move this up and this would just be nailed face trim and you could adjust the profiles or whatever you wanted to do. I'm going to give it a little bit of an eighth inch reveal there. And there is our detail for our window head. You can do the same thing to annotate it, come up to text. You, know, you can call all of these bits and pieces out here. You can call out all the trim and the sizes of the trim. So let's go down in our project browser. The last thing we'll do is we'll put these pieces on a page. Let's go to our wall sections. There's nothing here. That's because we have to take the view and we actually have to drag it onto the page. So I'm going to go find that section. Here's my section nine. So we're going to put this right here. A little bit more cleanup to do on that. So I don't want to see the type of wall. I can bring this down. Don't need that to be quite so high. And then I can do the same thing with my section nine call out. I can actually drag it right onto the same page and you'll see that Revit 
automatically puts the detailed number and the page. You can also change these. So I'm going to say wall section here. You'll see that it changes the name of that view. Now, the, the downside of doing this is that um, if you don't number your wall sections, you, you can't have the same name. So I'll show you a way around that. If this was wall section one, for instance, and I had wall section two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, but I didn't want to have um, you know a different title. I just wanted them to all say wall section. Um, all I would need to do is come up here, click on that view, and then you can see this has a title on the sheet that's different. So we'll just type wall section there. And now all it says is wall section, even though the view name says wall section one. We'll do the same thing up here. So I'm gonna change this to be E8. And then we're going to change this name. And I'm gonna call this window head detail. In this case, because it's probably the only window head detail I'm gonna have, um, I could just leave it that way. Now it's a little bit confusing in the browser. You'll see that when you use the section to create a detail, it falls underneath the section's header. So I'm actually gonna click on my off of my detail, but I'm still active. I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna call it a detail. And now you can see that it falls under the detail views section. So it's, it's a minor semantics thing, but it makes it easier to find things. So we've covered an awful lot in this video. We worked on adding components from the library and modeling custom components. We created work sets. We created component stairs. And we modified those stairs. We created railings and we worked with ramps. I showed you how to set up detail views and sections. I added detail components and we created our own details from CAD and I showed you how to annotate all of those pieces. So you're really coming along well in your Revit training here, and I hope you've had a great time. We've got one more video left, and I'll see you in video 10. This course is provided by MGS Global Group. We provide Revit, ARCHICAD, and AutoCAD drafting for architecture and design firms. Feel free to reach out to us if you need production drafting at mgsglobalgroup.com. Don't forget to subscribe.